Anyway, Madam Rodelina Yana, what do you make of um, the, the run up to this election, the trust for the security apparatus in our recent history, and what needs to be done to make sure that we get uh, everything going to get it right when it comes to security for this election? That sort of apprehension that needs to be taken off. Um, right. Well, let me say good morning to our cherished viewers. And good morning to Mr. Alan Tremating. Wish you well. Hope you're doing well also where you are. Um, you know, when it comes to the security of, of elections, you know, the people who are actually supposed to um, help mm. are the police, not the military. The military only gets called in when the police are not able to handle a situation. So... I am not expecting to see military men hovering around um, polling stations on election day. I am expecting to see policemen and maybe some uh, other security agencies like the immigration, prisons, um, and customs who may be roped in if they don't have enough men to go around. What we would be doing or we would expect for them to do is to be as neutral and professional as they can be. That means going there and just watching people do the right thing, not intimidating anyone, not trying to influence anyone, and just observing for us to get the peace that we want. This is a very peaceful country. Um, we've had some situations in the 2020 elections that we do not want repeated. Mm. We don't want to see another Ayawaso West Ogon on our hands. So all that we can ask for is that lessons have been learned and therefore we must go into this election with just one thing in mind, that we're all going to go through with what we need to do. Wake up, take your card, go to the center, stay in the queue, vote, mm. go home, or if you, you want to stay around, stay around, but keep away from the pool, the, the pool box. That's all there is to it. Um, I don't think that we need any form of threats from the military. I don't think that what Kujo said is something that we really want to hear. No one is asking anybody to beat anybody. No military person has any right to beat anyone. You understand? Um, so you shouldn't even put it in our heads that you will beat anybody. Mm. If someone misbehaves, you will call in the police. Um, and there's also the military police who can take that person up and hand the person over to the Ghana Police Service to do with the person what they wish to do with the person. But we do not want anybody manhandling any Ghanaian during this election. It doesn't matter if you are from the military. It doesn't matter if you are from the police or whatever. No Ghanaian must be manhandled mm. during these elections. If you take a, a look at our recent history, I, I covered the Ayahuasca West War going debacle that morning. Uh, I was then doing some work with Joy, so before I'll, uh, I'll go to the corporate over, I pass it to cover the election. And you look at the way those security thugs and subsequently what we found out from that commission hearings, the things they did that morning and up to today, nobody's held responsible for it. I mean, it will play on the mind of the ordinary voter, won't it? Definitely. It will play on the minds of the ordinary voter. And these are some of the things that governments, incumbents do to drive away voters. Because once you have a situation like what happened at um, Iowa so West Wogan, people then get even scared to come out and vote. But you see, um, Rola, let's not lose sight of the fact that we have a lot of miscreants who are not military men who have gotten access to the uniform because from a west um, um, from the iowa to west Wogan, for instance we came to an understanding that some of the people people just said we don't know them this is not part of us so there are people who will be there in probably military uniforms but they are not soldiers that is the one big problem that we may be facing you know those people who are going to come in there though they are not because listen if you listen to um the press conference of the NDC, for instance, you know, talking about people being trained at Asatrari and all those things to be put in uniform. 
you understand, on election day to come and probably intimidate people. Then we have something coming. We need to be very careful about such situations. We do not want another ayahuasca. Mm. And you see, it's, it's for instance, let's, let's put another, look at another angle. At the moment, we have a lot of police and uh, military and whatever all around. It serves as a deterrent. You understand? But mm. when you are using the military to intimidate mm. people, for them not to be able to come and vote. I'll give you one example. Um, in the Kusak area, for instance, we, we, we are seeing a lot of military people along the road. When you say Kusa, you in the Boko, in the Boko Enclave, 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 Zabila, Posega, Zabila, Garo, Garo, those areas. Pani area. mm. We are seeing a lot of military people around, you understand. Under the guise, maybe it's true, of trying to keep away infiltrators from Burkina Faso. But then if you think of the fact that military men went into Garu and beat people up, you have practically made the people afraid to come out and vote, even mm. at the sight of a military man. So we will plead that keep them away from the polling stations. Keep the military completely away. If they have to be by the border, let them stay by the border points and stop anybody from coming in. But for goodness sake, we wouldn't want to see any military person in front of any polling station. Because it's intimidating <coughs> and it doesn't give the people enough courage to come out and come and cast their votes. It's happening in other places. Mm. All we are saying is the military should stay out of the politics until it is absolutely necessary mm. for, for them, them to come, come in. in. Yes, sir. Let me let me let me give you two minutes. Until um, Oda. Yes, you and I go way back. Yeah, I know we go way mm. back. So sometimes you, you, you forget. I, I apologize. Yes. Profusely. So I just want to tell I just want to tell Ghanaians that we we are the crossroads. We've had 32 years of the NDC and the MPP put together. And we are still where we are. We have not improved our lives. And I am asking that this time on December 7th, 2024, you will give your votes to Mr. Alan Shramatin, an independent candidate. Let us give these two parties a shock. Let Ghanaians choose Ghana. And that means choosing Mr. Alan Shramatin and the butterfly. We are also asking you to know and ask yourself within yourself whether your lives have been bettered with these two people in power over the last 32 years mm -hmm. so let us go into the pools thinking first of ourselves and our future and our children's future and then giving our votes to mr alan Tremating and knowing full well that he is going to be able to create those jobs using the same natural resources that we have we have so many water bodies we have the land we have good sunshine we have rain and upon all that we are still suffering we have got a solid plan. We are not talking of manifestos. It's not a, pro a promise. It is a plan. And that is what we intend to use to change things around for this country. And we expect you at home and wherever you are to give Auntie us Rhoda, your You mandates. look good in the yellows. Beautiful. Thank you. Uh, please put the medium <laughs> shot for, uh, there and let me see. Yellow is sunshine. Beautiful. It's beautiful and it's bright. All right. And that is uh, what Delhi says.